Welcome back to Roll for Adventure. Today we're looking at Mutants and Masterminds. We're lucky enough to be joined by Steve Kenson, the designer of Mutants and Masterminds, all the way from New Hampshire. Welcome to the show, Steve. Thanks. Thanks very much for having me. So what inspired you to create Mutants and Masterminds? Uh, well, my, my initial inspiration was actually uh, a desire to um, have uh, a, a setting uh, published. I um, was working on the um, the setting that eventually became Freedom City, uh, Mutants and Masterminds, sort of signature setting, um, as a, a freelance project uh, some years ago, and the uh, initial plans to to publish it fell through um, with uh, the publisher I was working with, and um, as sometimes happens, and. Um, so I ended up uh, sort of working on the project uh, on my own as, as just sort of a side project because I enjoyed the setting and I was having a lot of fun with it. And um, some time later on, I uh, started freelancing for, for Green Renin Publishing. Um, I did a couple of D20 projects for them very early on in the, the early days of the, the open game license. And... Um, I uh, talked to Chris Premus, the president of the company, and I was I was bemoaning basically just having this you know great superhero setting that I was working on, but there was no no place for me to pitch it to because there weren't any active games being published at that time. So um, Chris said, "Well, you know the the D twenty license is is doing well for us. Um, we're looking to try and do some new things. Uh, I'll tell you what." If you want to design a D20 superhero game, uh, we'll do a two-book deal. We'll do the core rule book and we'll do your setting book. And then we'll just kind of see how it goes from there. Um, and honestly, I was a little dubious at first uh, about the notion. Um, but um, I once I got into it, I really had uh, I realized there was a lot of potential there and had a lot of fun uh, putting together the initial um, – edition of Mutants and Masterminds. And now here we are more than 10 years later, the game's in its third edition. Um, I'm working on a new edition of Freedom City. So uh, all in all, I'd say it worked out pretty well. What were your main design goals? Well, the the, the main thing was to, to create a superhero game that uh, played fairly quickly and reflected the 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 style of the of the comics um, that that had a lot of action to it, um, and that had um, that took the because I was using the the D twenty core material that took those rules and implemented them in such a way that really reflected uh, the way superheroes played out uh, in, at the game table. Uh, and that's part of why uh, Mutants and Masterminds uh, implemented some of the changes to the, the core um, D20 SRD um, that it did early on uh, in the design process was the desire to, to build a game that, that could handle the really powerful superheroic characters but also play fairly quickly and not involve... Uh, you know, rolling 20 dice, you know, to add up to determine how much your character did when he punched someone and things like that. Well, how did you arrive at the decision to build the game around powers rather than classes? We looked, I looked at classes um, initially and, you know, I, I started off by, by taking all of the essential core elements of the, the, the D20 system resource document and looking at them and sort of breaking them down. And uh, I knew fairly early on that classes weren't a very likely approach um, for the, the game just because superheroes, uh, while they, there are some, some archetypes, um, superheroes don't break down into such easily um, divided archetypes as a lot of fantasy characters do. And there's such a degree of, of variability amongst them it makes it tricky. Um, and I looked at initially doing some archetypes and then some, you know, options in terms of like multi-classing or things like that, but it just turned out to be too complicated. Um, and it made it too difficult to, um, build a superhero concept from the ground for, to, to start with. There was, there was too much in terms of, oh, well, eventually you want your, um, you know, mutant teleporter to also be a, you know, sorceress, well, you know, if you're multi-classing, that means you're going to have to wait until you level up 
And it was just, it was too involved as far as that went. And it just really got in the way of building the kind of characters people wanted to play. How would you sum up Mutants and Masterminds for somebody new to role playing? Well, I usually start um, with finding out if they're familiar with the you know the D twenty system, which is pretty broadly known. If they're completely new to to RPGs, then you know it's it's basically explaining the concept that the game you know is is really just uh, you know a, a grown up version of of the way we played superheroes as kids with rules to distinguish who gets hit and who doesn't and, you know, whether or not things actually really bounce off of you. Um, you know, and that's, that's really the high concept of it. Everything beyond that is just, you know, looking at the, the core game system and how everything is pretty much handled by you roll the die, you add a modifier on your side, you compare it to a number and that, is pretty much how you handle everything as far as that goes. Everything beyond that starts to get into just sort of variations on a theme, so. Are there any aspects of the game you think could work better? Well, I think that there are aspects of the game that could work better in some regards. For example, the uh, character creation is um, very flexible uh, and has a lot of options. But at the same time, that approach can be kind of paralyzing to some players um, because they just don't know where to start. Uh, and it's a lot to take in in terms of building a, a character. And we've tried to address that shortcoming in other areas by doing things like providing a lot of pre-generated archetypes. Um, so that players can just pick from a type of character they want to play and modify accordingly. Um, and uh, in the, the Deluxe Heroes Handbook uh, for the third edition, we also have uh, this really great random character generator um, that lets you actually roll up you know, a, a starting power level 10 character from a whole series of sort of random packages uh, that you plug in together. Uh, that sort of addresses that same issue in terms of how do I get a character together really quick. Um, so, you know, we're, we're aware of things that, you know, are uh, potential challenges or shortcomings in the game and, and try to do our best to, to find alternatives and different ways to address them. If you could go back and change anything about Mutes and Masterminds, would you? Well, you know, the, the games had seen three editions so far, and that's given me plenty of opportunity to implement, you know, hind, uh, lots of things in hindsight as far as that goes. So I'm pretty happy with uh, the, the way the current edition uh, looks and feels and plays. Um, it, it gave me a, a good opportunity to, to um, kind of polish a lot of the stuff. Second edition was the largest revision uh, of the game and where we learned the the very most about it um, and third edition polishes a lot of things uh, as far as that goes but I think it's it's a really solid game the way it is now. Mutants and Masterminds has a lot of depth to it so you can build any character you can think of but this also makes it hard to introduce new players to the system. What would be your advice for GMs looking to bring in new players? Well I think that if you're introducing a completely new player to the game, it can be useful um, to start them off with the idea of having them play, um, you know, sort of a guest star character, um, you know, and say, okay, well, this, especially if there's a known non-player character hero um, around who uh, is associated with the with the player character's team, you can say, okay, play this character for a game or two. Um, until you get a get your feet wet and get a feel for how it plays, um, and then when you've done that and you've decided that you you like it and you want to keep playing, we'll look at creating a, a, a permanent regular character for you. Um, you know, but something like that, you know, I think most players, unless they're really really into the the notion of of creating a character, um, really just want to play first. And so the the thing to focus on is to is to get them playing. Uh, so that's, that's my, tends to be my approach uh, to that sort of a thing with new players uh, as, is to get them right into the game. As a GM, it can be hard to keep 
track of all the different powers and details that you need to know. Do you have any tips or tricks for GMs? Well, you know, I, I have to say that as a as a game master, my own uh, my own style tends to be a little playing a little bit loose uh, with the with the rules uh, as far as that goes. Uh, in the in the heat of the game, I tend to go most with uh, what works in the moment, and you know, if it's not exactly uh, by the rules, then you know, so be it. Uh, as far as that goes. Uh, um, you know, I think that having, you know, having, you know, decent, a decent set of notes and, you know, a, a good game master screen goes a long way uh, in that regard, um, you know, and, and particularly in terms of um, powers that have uh, different degrees of effect, just having, uh, you know, a reference card or a reference sheet that, that you, know, you know what those, you know, degrees are. Um, should they come up in play, things like afflictions um, that uh, tend to have a lot of customizable degrees to them uh, is good to have as a reference. Um, I tend to um, build out a, a quick table for all of the uh, characters in the adventure where I just keep track of their, their defenses uh, and their other really relevant numbers um, that are likely to come up in play so I'm not shuffling through a lot of character sheets uh, when I'm playing, but I, I know really quickly what somebody's, you know, dodge defense is if I need to know it, um, those kinds of things. Um, but, you know, beyond that, a lot of it is really just detail. And, you know, I, I rely on the players to know what their, their characters' powers do. Where do you see Mutants and Masterminds going in the future? Well, um, upcoming, uh, a lot of it is uh, really filling out... Um, different aspects of uh, the uh, Earth Prime setting uh, where, where Freedom City is set. Um, and uh, we've been doing uh, an ongoing series called the Atlas of Earth Prime um, that basically it divides up different geographic areas around the world and looks at what those, those different parts of the world are like um, and uh, local superheroes and supervillains and sources for powers and origins and just all the sorts of various things that are going on, you know, that make them either places you can set your own game in or you can have your characters visit, you know, uh, if they're, they're traveling uh, around the world. Um, likewise, uh, we already um, expanded the, the setting with the um, Emerald City setting um, that we released, which is uh, uh, Freedom City's West Coast counterpart um, that presents a whole nother um, urban city environment uh, with sort of a different take on um, how to uh, kick off a Mutants and Masterminds game. Emerald City has a, although it has a rich history, it has a much uh, more recent history when it comes to superheroes um, who are active in the area. So um, there's, there's a lot more opportunities for sort of up and coming player characters uh, as far as that goes. And our upcoming uh, Cosmic Handbook uh, basically takes things a step further and goes beyond Earth Prime um, and out into the cosmos and looks at the solar system and the region of the galaxy around Earth and the various alien races and empires and what's going on with them um, and uh, looks at sort of the greater universe um, and even multiverse um, of uh, the, the setting uh, in terms of expanding it uh, and providing additional uh, opportunities for adventures. So there's a lot of material there um, that's, that's either out or in the works. Um, we're uh, working on a, uh, a new edition of Freedom City um, to uh, bring it up to date with recent events, um, advance the timeline a bit, and uh, update all of the characters to the third edition of the game. Um, and uh, we have a new edition of uh, Lucian Solbon's Hero High source book uh, in the works that will also uh, provide an update for the Claremont Academy setting in Freedom City. Um, so, uh, cause that's been a very popular, uh, both setting and genre, uh, teenage superheroes. Um, so we're looking forward to both updating that and, uh, sort of incorporating that into the greater setting. Um, uh, so there's a lot of, of, uh, material in the works. Um, the initial releases for third edition concentrated very heavily on a lot of game system stuff. Uh, we had power profiles and gadget guides. 
uh, and a whole lot of villains um, to basically provide players and game masters with lots of tools for building characters and having them fight things. Um, but now we're really looking into um, building out a lot of aspects uh, about the wider setting uh, for the game to provide more context. What's your favorite superhero to come out of Mutants and Masterminds game? Oh, gosh. Um, I, I'm Needless to say, I'm very fond of... of most, if not all, of the characters uh, in the in the game, but um, I, I have a very personal soft spot um, for um, Johnny Rocket, who's the super speedster uh, member of the the Freedom League, um, because right from the the first edition of uh, Freedom City, um, Johnny was written as uh, as an openly gay character, and um, I got a lot of really good feedback. Um, from uh, players and fans who really appreciated um, seeing uh, a character like that in a, a fairly mainstream um, RPG product, as well as a superhero setting. Uh, and so I've always been very, you know, both fond and proud of having uh, a character like Johnny in the setting. Um, and I like the fact that we've been able to um, sort of follow along uh, with him uh, as as the the setting has advanced, um, he's uh, we we mentioned in fact because he guest stars in um, an Emerald City um, adventure um, that uh, he's married now um, that uh, um, marriage equality has come to Freedom City and um, so um, hey, you know things like that you know really uh, help bring the, the the setting alive and you know we're really seeing a lot of great. Uh, diversity in that regard, you know, all throughout uh, our new products and things like Freedom, uh, the Earth Prime Atlas and the like. So we've covered a lot of mutants and masterminds. Are there any other projects you're working on? Well, I just finished up uh, a few months ago um, working on two Dungeons & Dragons products um, that Green Ronin um, uh, co-produced with Wizards of the Coast. Um, the uh, adventure out of the abyss uh, for the Rage of Demons storyline and the uh, upcoming Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide uh, for the Forgotten Realms. Um, and those are due out this fall. Um, in fact, um, Out of the Abyss uh, comes out in mid-September. Um, but uh, in terms of upcoming projects, uh, in addition to Mutants and Masterminds, um, Green Ronin just finished up a, a, a Kickstarter for a new edition of our uh, Blue Rose romantic fantasy uh, setting. Uh, I'm going to be doing the uh, lead design and development on that book um, and uh, basically both updating and expanding the setting uh, we originally published about 10 years ago and um, updating that we're going to be using our uh, Fantasy Age game system uh, as the, the game engine for it. Um, so it's going to be adapting uh, the Fantasy Age material, uh, building in a new um, sort of psychic-based magic system um, and a bunch of other um, uh, adjustments and subsystems uh, for uh, that particular genre of fantasy. Thank you so much for joining us today, Steve. We really appreciate it. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me.